Hello, everyone. Um, <laughs> my name. <laughs> okay. <laughs> that that was a good start. <laughs> good so, idea. hello, everyone. Um, my name is uh, Ivan Mihaljevic, and uh, I'm an authorized CVT teacher. Uh, from Croatia. And uh, I'm Aaron Perry. I'm a CVT certified vocal coach in uh, Germany. And uh, originally I come from England. So what is CVT? CVT stands for Complete Vocal Technique, uh, which is a method developed by Catherine Sadelin in uh, Denmark. Why CVT? What, what would you say to someone who asked you, like, why choose CVT? I don't want to misquote anyone, but I think one of the, uh, I, I, if I remember correctly, the reason Catherine uh, decided to start compiling um, music theory and putting it into a, a system of her own was uh, due to the fact she was looking for concrete, uh, really concrete tips to improve her breathing while singing because she had problems with asthma and uh, found it quite difficult to get very, very specific tips of like what muscle groups to uh, activate and things like this. Um, it was definitely my experience as well when I uh, f first started having vocal coaching that uh, the ideas and the tips that you get around breathing were sometimes quite abstract. And um, yeah, this is when you ask the question, why CVT, this is why, so that we can get some uh, concrete information uh, about singing. Yeah, absolutely. So, so the whole method is uh, it's science research based. Mm. So uh, CVI, Complete Vocal Institute, is doing a whole lot of their own scientific research. And uh, many of it is uh, published in, in, you know, peer reviewed journals, such as Journal of Voice. Basically, the idea is that the technique needs to correspond to human anatomy and physiology. So, you know, giving instructions that make sense from that point of view. Um, another great thing, in my opinion, is that uh, it doesn't, it, it kind of tries to cover uh, all of the sounds that the human voice can make and categorize them and find ways of teaching them. So it's not just, you know, one sound and that's what you need to sing like. It's like you can do all these different th things with your voice. With it comes the idea that vocal coaches or singing teachers' uh, own taste is not important to the singer. The singer kind of needs to decide what he or she wants to sound like, and then the teacher is there to help them get there. That makes it a genre-free approach, like it can be applied to pretty much any genre, uh, because uh, you don't have a certain sound ideal that you need to always respect. Some of the things that I've found very helpful were, uh, when I started out, I was struggling with singing high notes which was something that i over time became obsessed with and uh <laughs> particularly <laughs> like so many singers particularly like strong high notes you know some of the other methods that i've come across over the years um have taught me how to get high notes but it was always sort of in a you know like you know very held back and ah uh that kind of thing not that powerful sounding and you know cvt helped me to really get that uh yay thing going um then the other thing is vocal effects rough vocal effects you know cvt i i think possibly the first method that you know uh, looked into how to teach, you know, sounds like, yeah, 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 you know, how to get sounds like that, that singers wanted, how to teach them and how to make them in a manner that's not damaging to your voice. Yeah, I know. I actually, my experience mirrors quite similarly what uh, you experienced when you uh, started singing i uh also my initial experience learning how to sing was uh in classical singing and uh i 
developed very, very quickly a sound ideal, or at least I produced very, very quickly a sound ideal that wasn't my ideal, but it was the ideal <laughs> of my vocal coach. Um, so I was singing the songs that I love to sing at that time in my life. Uh, it was probably Robbie Williams and uh, Queen um, as well. And noticed that uh, as much as I wanted to sound like Freddie Mercury, for example, I was sounding more and more like a meatloaf. Um, and <laughs> that was a frustrating experience for me because, um, yeah, with uh, meatloaf sound, um, the highest note that I wanted to reach, like in, in, in Queen songs, uh, somebody to love, or, or, or even the show must go on. They were just they were just unreachable with a, a classical technique, at least for me. And yep. um, yeah, I I ended up uh, stopping uh, my classical voice coaching at some point when I began to notice there wasn't any further progress in my vocal development. You just switched over to singing every day. Soon found out on almost on my own that uh, when I just let go of the meatloaf like sound, the, the classical sound and start producing a, a lighter, warmer sound that I f find higher notes much, much easier to hit. Yep. And uh, my experience a little bit later was then with uh, um, Estil voice training, which uh, was really helpful in explaining and helping me understand why these lighter sound colors were making it easier for me to hit the higher notes. I also learned my uh, first little bit of information about distortion from uh, Estil Voice. That was in oh. two thousand and that was in two thousand and ten. That's interesting. Um, yeah. Ever since I found CVT, I now have a variety of vocal effects that I can individually switch on and switch off. Which, uh, yeah, wasn't the case for the longest time. So. Hmm. Yeah, could could you give say, an example of the yeah. meatloaf sound versus the other sound? Yeah, sure. So, um, <clears throat> so whereas uh, Freddie might have a, I don't pay all on my own. Uh, meatloaf would sound, I don't pay all on my own. And, uh, and I would do you get the picture <laughs> yeah, yeah but yeah so you've also learned to do that sound high in the meantime yeah, yeah in the meantime yes <laughs> so uh yeah it's is is quite a big uh technical difference uh just just what a few sound color changes what a difference they make with uh yeah how easy it is to hit or easy or difficult it is to hit higher notes so yeah yeah, yeah. so our main topic for today is how to get started with CVT. Yes. So, uh, ah, one thing, um, one thing, uh, I also wanted to say before we move on, uh, with how to start CVT, I initially had an experience, um, with dogmas. And, uh, this is one of the things that I love about CVT. There are no dogmas. So, for example, when I first learned to sing, I had to stand straight, keep still, relax your jaw, and, and this was the ideal situation. A stable posture, don't move about too much, and... Yeah. Um, and there were also things like um, a falsetto. You, you, you shouldn't touch falsetto. You don't really need it. It's okay as an effect for pop music if you want, but don't use it too much because it will ruin your voice was, was the uh, message from my mm -hmm. vocal coach back in the day. I've, I've since learned that uh, falsetto doesn't destroy your voice. <laughs> this is one thing I really appreciate with CVT. It's, it's a lot more open-minded in respect to the sounds that you can create. So yeah, how do we get started with CVT, Ivan? Yeah. So the first thing I would suggest is getting um, one of the CVT apps and mm -hmm. uh, you can find the link uh, to those in the description down below. 
uh, there's a free version that I usually recommend to start with, you know, just to get a taste of what CVT is and, uh, you know, how you could, what it's about and if it's right for you. Um, there's a ton of info in that free app and uh, you can read quite a lot about it. And then there's um, a paid app, app, which is basically like a 400 page book. Uh, but a four, 400 page book with some uh, audio examples, you know, videos and stuff like that, that you can't really have in a book. Plus it gets updated regularly. There's also a book, which is cool if you want to have, you know, a piece of paper in front of you for some people preferred for re reading. Um, the benefit of the app, though, is that it gets updated. So uh, since uh, CVI is doing a lot of research, they're constantly developing and improving the method. You won't miss out on all the new stuff with the app. You know, once you have the app, you can read about it, try some stuff out. So uh, generally, CVT is divided in uh, a couple different areas. The first of them are the three overall principles. Then we have the vocal modes. Uh, then we have uh, sound colors, effects, and then kind of all the other stuff like, um, you know, microphone technique, uh, interpretation, and so on. When starting out with a new singer, usually uh, we need to address some of the overall principles at the start of the whole thing. And uh, you were telling me, so one of those three overall principles is support. And you were telling me about a really interesting support game that you usually play with uh, whenever you have a new singer coming in. Yeah, so it's a, a, a gamified approach um, for training your support. It's quite literally just making a noise for as long as you possibly can and timing that with a uh, stopwatch most people in my experience manage around 15 to 20 25 seconds at the most making this sound um, after we've done that we then go through all of the different support points uh, we go over the support tree um, we talk about what support is um, in CVT, it's uh, shortened in to, to one sentence. Uh, support is holding back the breath. And uh, then we go down the support tree, talk about how uh, holding back the breath can be achieved by keeping your diaphragm lowered. Keeping the ribs stretched can also be achieved by uh, pulling in the abdomen around the navel, activating the um, back muscles, the upper back muscles, and the um, oh man, what is it in the what, what's the uh, English translation? The muscle in the lenden bereich. You muscles. forgot your mother language. <laughs> I forgot my mother tongue again. Um. Yeah. So, and uh, yeah, and we go through e each one of these um, uh, muscle groups, um, activating them, and we do the exercise again. To this day, everyone manages like ten seconds longer at least mm. yep. when they go through this process. And uh, then it's a case of, okay, uh, we've done that together. Now you know what to do. You can take that away and, and practice that in your own time at home, do another two or three times between now and the next time we see each other. And then we just have a look and, and see what the, the person I'm working with manages in the next session. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Cool. So just, you know, very quickly is uh, the, the rest of the three overall principles uh, are necessary twang, which is the, I, I guess we'll talk about twang more in another video, but uh, it's just basically means of producing a clear note. Uh, there's this very specific narrowing right above the vocal folds that needs to happen in order to just get a clear tone out. So uh, if if we if I exaggerate that narrowing, it will sound like eh, eh, eh. but uh, it can also be just a little bit eh, for, you know, just a clear note. So any clear note will have a little bit of that narrowing. 
Um, and we'll talk more about that in some of the other videos. But Twang, um, uh, you, you talked about the an anatomical uh, narrowing above the vocal folds. Yeah. A way to get there is a, a fairly easy way to get there that uh, everyone uh, can immediately relate to is just to go quack, 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 like a duck. Yeah. Quack, and then just make a, make a note out of it that mm. you then hold. Wah, 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 eh, eh. Yeah. So just uh, j just a quick uh, tip on that because uh, it twang often gets confused with nasality, and uh, oftentimes when we try to demo that quacking sound, we we kind of you know have both of them together in the. Wah, wah. But uh, twang is not nasality. So I can take the nasality away, and uh, you can also check by pinching your nose and seeing if the sound changes. So the sound is staying the same. If I have that, that will change the sound. So you know, just for you know, people watching this and uh, trying to make sense of this, twang is not the same as nasality because sometimes you have people doing eh, 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 and thinking they're twanging and eh, that's you know just being nasal yeah uh then we have uh not protruding the jaw so not doing this with your lower jaw uh which is something that i don't find happens so often also, some singers seem to be able to work with that fine, but if a singer gets into some trouble and I see them doing that, that's something that I will usually try to correct. Um, so then uh, we also have avoiding tightening of the lips, so sort of singing like this, uh, that can get, uh, get you into trouble on high notes. And uh, you can especially see that on like ooh vowels, like when people go for ooh <laughs> and, you know, get in trouble. Uh, so, you know, learning to do oh without that thing uh, is rather helpful. So sure. we talked about the overall principles. So uh, what are the benefits of, you know, following and working with these three overall principles? Yeah, the benefits are that uh, you can sing louder if you want to, you gain more control over your voice, you um, don't get tired and fatigued, and uh, you don't get hoarse. So it's yep. winning all round, basically. Mm -hmm. And uh, yep. basically yeah, it helps you use your voice more efficiently, we could put yeah. it like that. Yeah. yeah. So that's it. In short, about three overall principles. The next step is, you know, we have these vocal modes. What are the modes? So uh, I like to describe them as like uh, gears. Mm -hmm. uh, if, if you've ever driven a car, granted not everyone has, depending on the situation you're in, you need a, a certain gear. I mean, if you're going uphill, you're probably better off in second gear than you are in fifth for example. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. Uh, with singing is, uh, is also comparable in that uh, if you're in a very loud situation and you can't hear yourself very well and you need to sing loud and be heard, then uh, overdrive is probably going to be your, your best bet. Overdrive or edge. If you haven't got a microphone, for example, because these two modes don't have a, a loudness limit, don't have a volume limit. Uh, modes are a specific configuration in the vocal tract, and uh, also that influences what the vocal folds do themselves. So basically, you know, the whole system together, we have these different coordinations that we can get into, and there are specific coordinations that are sort of more efficient than others. And uh, we call them centers of the modes. So you can recognize them because suddenly, you know, it takes less effort and energy to do it. I think the first thing to understand about the modes, if you've worked with another singing pedagogy system before, they are not the same thing as 
uh, chest voice, head voice, mixed voice, whatever. So, so not based around the same thing. There's another thing that kind of covers that and it's density in CBT, but uh, I think we'll for now skip that. But uh, just so you know, you know, that's not it. So then the thing to um, understand is metal. And what is metal? Because CVT talks about uh, metallic modes versus non-metallic modes, sounds that have metal or don't have metal. So, you know, usually people are like, okay, what, what's this metallic sound? You, you could describe it as brassy, like a brass instrument uh, to me. Uh, and to give some sound examples, like, hey, doesn't have metal, but hey, has a lot of metal. And you can hear that brassy character poking through. Um, it's very much linked with volume. So the more metal we have, the more volume we have. And But there's a certain, you know, range of volumes that we can use without actually getting metallic. So, you know, from eh, very quiet eh, up to about there eh, and something happened there. Eh, eh, you can hear something turning off, uh, turning on and off, and that's basically metal. Um, that's a change in mode. Yep, exactly. So we have one non-metallic mode, neutral, and three metallic modes. Um, you can tell us more about that. I've talked for a while now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so um, you oh, uh, just demon. Uh, yeah, um, go ahead. Uh, sorry to interrupt. I, I just wanted no to problem. say one more thing about the metal and you know what it is physically i mean there are various things happening so when we get metallic there's more uh the setting gets um a little more narrow inside the vocal tract uh and also it relates to something called skewing quotient or maximum flow declination rate so basically think of it as the vocal folds um uh, coming together quicker uh, then separating. So, so, you know, they come together a little quicker and then separate, come together quicker and then separate. Unlike in non-metallic where, you know, it, it's kind of, uh, you know, the same motion moving in and out in a way. Cool. So, um, you, before the, uh, vocal fold uh, description uh, demonstrated a transition from uh, non-metallic to metallic. And uh, you specifically there didn't uh, state what mode you were changing to. Yeah, because just, just, just you know, the concept of metal. There are, there, are three, there are three possible modes that you can uh, transition into. And um, a big thing in CVT is vowels. Vowels play a very important role because they also kind of set the um, coordination that you're going to have anatomically. So if you start with a quiet tone, just as you did, like this with an A vowel, I'm going to end up, the second I start raising the volume, I'm going to end up in overdrive because A is an overdrive vowel. The same thing would be true if I start uh, with an uh. uh I'm going to end up in uh, in curbing. So um, depending on what what vowels you're working with, uh, that will then decide which mode you end up in when you practice this transition. Yeah, so every mode has its own specific vowel that you have to uh, learn and train. And this process of, of learning and training the vowels um, is called centering the modes. 
And uh, there are some other things as well that you need to pay attention to when you're training metallic modes for the first time. Uh, if we take overdrive as an example, the sound should never ever be airy under any circumstances. So even if we start with a hey sound, because maybe you're singing that way in a song, hey, the second you get louder, you have to remove that air from the sound. Um, another thing that's relevant in overdrive is um, your mimic. Making a bite, it can be a really useful tool in stabilizing the uh, overdrive coordination when you're training. So I don't think I don't think we intend to go through all of the modes and explain them piece for piece by piece, do we? No. Maybe that's a no a task no. for another day. Yeah, but, not now. Um, but we we can just also say that curbing is half metallic while yes overdrive and edge can be uh or reduced metallic is the current term while overdrive <laughs> and edge are reduced to full metallic uh so which means that we can get more metal in overdrive and edge than in curbing and uh, also we can get louder in overdrive and edge than in curbing so i'm thinking we could give just some sound examples for each mode um, yeah, sure. So uh, maybe we can both do a neutral example first. Um, so let's say one for me would be uh, overhead the albatross sings motionless upon the air. Okay. Um, and I'm never gonna dance again. Guilty feet have got no rhythm. Cool. So curbing next. Um, now the long summer's come and gone. Is it come? Is it go? That's the way it is. Oh, take, take, take it all, but you never give. Oh, cool. A little and bit cool, of neutral there at the cool, end. Cool ending mm. in neutral. Yeah, that's exactly what I was <laughs> about to say. Yeah. But uh, the thing is, usually when we sing, we don't stay in just one mode. So we will transition. Um, okay, so overdrive. Um, my gift is my song. Can anybody? Cool. And uh, edge. Um, I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. The shadow has gone. Okay, now I gotta do high one too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Shamas <laughs> gone! Um, that, that ended in overdrive though, so uh, started edge and then uh, on was overdrive, yeah. Show was more edge direction, yeah. So every mode has a certain set of rules that apply to that mode and that we need to respect respect while singing in that mode and if we don't one of two scenarios will happen either you will change the mode or you will get stuck <laughs> so uh kind of you know an often heard example is uh trying to go above the volume limit of curbing so you know if you're singing an ooh vowel and you're oh uh, in curbing and you want to go even louder. Oh, oh, after a certain point, I'm just pushing and it it feels physically effortful. And, you know, it's starting to feel bad in, in my throat, but I'm not getting any more volume because that's the curving volume limit. So that's one of the things to respect. Uh, then also the vowels uh, for each mode. We'll not go through, you know, what the vowels are in each mode right now, but uh, basically, you know, you have to, you have these certain rules associated with each mode uh, that you need to respect to be able to sing freely, basically. And 
in exactly the same respect, if you don't obey the rules of overdrive, you will start to notice this um, curbing like volume limit feeling uh, happening while you're trying to sing loud in, in overdrive. This is because the at that point, it basically becomes curbing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. exactly. It, it, so. It's just that you're aiming for overdrive, but you're missing. Yeah, <laughs> and, and yeah, exactly. Stuck in curbing. You're yeah. off target because uh, you're well. If you're off off the vowel, then you're off target. Basically, you're you're off center. Obey the rules of the modes. <laughs> Obey. Obey. <laughs> and then uh, we come to sound color. Sure. And there's like six places where we can change sound color. You can drastically change how your voice sounds. Like make it. Uh, very bright and you know very light sounding and uh you know to the other extreme you can make it very dark and dopey sounding and then you can kind of you know uh, mix and match different places so you i can kind of make it dark but still keep the focus in there and uh you know get this kind of dark but still authoritative voice that cuts through <laughs> Um, and, you know, that comes on top of modes. So whichever mode we choose, we can darken or lighten the sound color. Anything to yeah. add? Uh, I think you covered it, to be honest. Okay, cool. And um, yeah. then we have the vocal effects. Vocal effects are something that we can add onto the sound. For example, we're both rock singers, so we love distortion. Uh, which basically if i go from a clean note to a distorted note it would sound like eh! so eh, yeah, yeah, yeah. um you're preparing for a high note right i i, no. I, can, I can see your hands on the piano no i'm, yeah! I, I'm not going that high i'm not going that high ivan <laughs> <laughs> No, I just wanted to, uh, my go-to example um, for distortion is mm. um, nice. um, So uh, this is a, a Queen song. The bell rings is uh, my go-to example. There's a, a, a nice little bit of distortion there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And um, I, I usually go for... Um, um enter sandman like okay Exilite! you know <laughs> nice um cool so uh but that's just one of the rough vocal effects uh we also have uh rattle growl grunt uh should we do a quick example of each one without much explanation we've already i think <laughs> gone quite Explained beyond a the, lot. the time <laughs> that we we're thinking of doing this rattle actually um, actually if we're gonna go <laughs> <laughs> nice uh, yeah so um okay rattle yeah yeah and can, can you just show the difference distortion rattle oh yeah sure yeah yeah Both. <laughs> <laughs> cool. And um, then um, growl. So, uh, uh, growl. I get my little help from my friends. Nice. Grunt. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> like <laughs> little sweet bunny rabbits. <laughs> and. Um, then we can also combine the effects, which you already demoed with uh, rattle and distortion. But um, so let's go to the other nicer sound of effects that uh, other you know singers that are not singing so aggressive genres also want to learn. So uh, one of the obvious ones is vibrato. So I, I think we've given examples of that already, but it's like a. 
there's actually a couple different ways we can do vibrato. But uh, let's leave that aside for now as well. Okay. <laughs> Um, so uh, one one thing I really appreciated with uh, CVT, and this is uh, I thought I'd mention this because it's something I always mention in the um, presentation when I have when I'm presenting CVT, is the um, the fact that in CVT you train um, a vibrato with a uh, tempo with a with a metronome often, yeah, so that. Uh, when you're using your vibrato, you can integrate your um, uh, vibrato in the rhythm of the song. Yep. And an example I like to give is uh, one, two, children of the damned. I don't know if you could um, yeah, yeah. Follow, follow that. Yeah, <laughs> the, especially like, like for the um you know heavy metal genre that kind mm -hmm. of slow uh and wide vibrato works uh, really well you know that uh yeah uh and then you know for something more subtle you'd probably want to go you know a bit closer to you know a quicker vibrato <laughs> And uh, yeah. yeah, okay, we've gone there and we said we won't. Anyway, <laughs> an example for of, of uh, creaking would be um, easy come, easy go. This e sound is the creaking. Mm -hmm. um, th if you allow it to fade out into the tone, easy come like that then uh we call it a creak if you go easy come like that then it's creaking because there's creaking happening the whole way through um and uh then we have uh, ornamentation uh, what else air added to the voice screams so air added to the voice can only be done in neutral that's important to note it's basically the uh, that along with the voice and um ornamentation oh, oh you know th those kind of little runs riffs runs whatever you want to call them um screams are basically just very high notes you know doing mm. uh Ow! is considered a scream so uh, I, I'm I don't have the list in front of me. Is there anything we've skipped? There probably no, is. No, I think um, I think uh, scream is also uh, described as any any sudden outburst that isn't uh, a, a part of the the song text that you're singing at that moment. So it could be also ah, oh, it could also be Whee! it could be anything. <laughs> yeah. Um. Mm -hmm. So that's the basic overview. So maybe yeah. just let's give some very basic tips on how to practice when start, starting with uh, this CVT thing. As, as I said, you know, get the app and uh, in it, you will get some sound examples of what the different modes sound like. Then I would say it's important to make the exercises simple. So uh, don't go and, you know, if you've just started out practicing edge, don't try doing two octave arpeggios uh, very quickly right away. So kind of, you know, make the exercise simple, make it one vowel, one note, you know, work through your range, make sure that you can do it, then add in notes as you go. And, uh, you know, basically work towards a phrase. So if you have a phrase in your song that you would like to use, I don't know, overdrive in, you know, practice no just single notes with overdrive vowels. Then, uh, and in overdrive, of course, because you can also do the overdrive uh, vowels in neutral. Gradually build it up, add more notes, add in consonants, uh, work your way towards singing that melody. So, you know, after doing some single notes, some three note scales and so on, you can also sing the melody of the song, but just one vowel, then, you know, incorporate both overdrive vowels, 
then uh, add in some consonants in there, um, and then, you know, try to sing the line with the actual lyrics. Yeah, there's, uh, that's the, um, there's my dog. That's the uh, uh, 21 step uh, process that, uh, that I, I, I think you're describing there, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So um, the number of steps can vary, of course, but yeah, of course. Yeah. <laughs> so one, one uh, tip um, I like to uh, give a, a lot of my singers uh, have problems finding a suitable time of day where they can be really loud when they practice at home. And uh, then there's the tip. Well, your drive to work is 20 minutes or a half an hour. Um, while you're listening to the radio in the morning, instead of uh, singing along to the song, maybe practice some overdrive. And if there's a song you like, just sing along to the song on the way to, on your way to work. Um, Don't do it if you're in public transportation, though. <laughs> oh, well, good point. <laughs> <laughs> Um, yeah, sing along to the song just using uh, the the overdrive vowels or the edge vowels, or yeah, and that's a an opportunity to get in a little bit of practice um, without doing anything, without making anything too complicated. You're literally just singing along to the song with a with a's and o's. Yeah, it, it's a really good idea. You know, you've practiced this on your own, but it's also easy to go wrong or get a wrong impression of what a certain mode is or whatever. So, you know, it's a good idea to get a teacher to work with. The CVT website has a list of authorized teachers uh, where you can, you know, basically see who the teachers are in your area, or you could also book us, of course. We're also on that list there, so and we're both working on Zoom and Skype as well as in person. If you want to see more videos from us that we definitely plan on making, uh, hit that subscribe button below and uh, the bell notification uh, to you know get notified when we post new videos. And uh, if you want to book a lesson with us, uh, you can also find uh, our contact details in the description below. Yeah, I'd also like to say if you enjoyed this video um, and you know other people that you think might find it interesting, share it on social media. And uh, yeah, we hope to see you next time. Bye bye.